Life on Earth is a major accomplishment in our solar system as well as among our galactic neighbors. It's what sets Earth apart from all the other planets we've observed over hundreds of years. We have a wide array of life forms that inhabit planet Earth, each with their own evolutionary branches going back millions of years. Our knowledge of life is dictated by the characteristics of our inhabitants on Earth, as well as the remnants of previous life forms that existed long ago. On this episode of How Theory, we're going to take a look at a variety of different life forms on theoretical worlds far from home to see what life would actually look like. Let's start off by looking at the driving force of advancement for all life, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. If you examine life on Earth-like exoplanets, or anywhere else in the universe where life may exist, there will always be the same evolutionary forces sculpting the inner workings of life. By sifting through the history of life on Earth, we encounter many repeating patterns and features that we can use to predict what our galactical neighbors might look like. One very common feature are the eyes. The eyes from insects, mammals, and octopuses were all developed independently from one another. Of course, there are many important differences between the eyes of these three life forms, but the concepts are inherently identical. Some animals use different ways to map their surroundings, such as infrared light for bats and echolocation for whales. What's important is that every complex life form will have a specific method to visualize its surroundings, and the method that evolution favors the most are eyes. Evolution also has a tendency to prefer symmetrical bodies because almost every single life form we know of is symmetrical. Scientists say the reason behind this symmetry is to create a center of mass in which we can traverse and manipulate the environment without losing balance to Earth's gravity. Earth's gravitational pull is responsible for much of the evolutionary characteristics that define us from other worlds. As the gravitational forces emitted by a planet increases, large and complex life would either have thicker and stronger bones, or be significantly smaller and shorter to weigh less. Another species of life that will see drastic changes are plants. On Earth, plants grow vertically in order to capture as much sunlight as possible, but this method is put on trial when other important factors are changed. We'll see how plant life may adapt to the environments of the exoplanets, which we'll be exploring shortly. All life on Earth has adapted to the sun at the center of the solar system, and our eyes have adapted to its visible light spectrum. However, stars come in all colors and sizes, and even small differences of magnitudes will reimagine life as we know it. Let's now embark on a journey to different life-hosting star systems around the galaxy, to explore fictional worlds in order to see what kind of life forms evolution would breed. On this rocky planet, gravity is three times stronger than it is on Earth. There are plenty of life forms that exist on this planet, but to simplify, we'll divide it between plants and animals. In this world, the whole star is identical to our sun, and the distance is the same like it is on Earth. Since gravity is super strong, it's highly unlikely that plants would grow to the heights like they do on Earth. Instead, plants would grow densely on the surface and only reach a couple of meters in height. With the added gravity, evolution would have two ways of sculpting the mammals that roam these forests. One way to deal with the extra gravity is by adding thicker bones and stronger muscles. If a mammal weighs 50 pounds on Earth, that same mammal will weigh around 150 pounds on this planet. Without a stronger structure, these animals would collapse under their own body weight from exhaustion. The downside to all these added features are that the required energy expenditure would be massive. The second evolutionary solution would be to significantly lower its mass and size in order to reduce its energy expenditure. The majority of the mammals could be up to three times lighter than mammals on Earth, as well as being only a couple feet tall. Let's say goodbye and visit the next world on our list. On this world, 
Gravity is five times less than it is on Earth, and a host star is a tiny red dwarf that provides just enough heat and light for life to survive. Due to these rough conditions, the only major life forms that have existed so far on this planet are simple plant-like organisms. This planet is currently going through its Paleozoic explosion like it happened on Earth 542 million years ago. The plant life on this exoplanet is extraordinarily different than any other plant life we've ever seen. Since the energy of the sun is so low and gravity is so weak, evolution would favor taller plants because they can grow vertically and grow as much leaves as possible to capture all the sunlight. There could be forests with plants up to 300 meters tall. Even with all this vertical space to gather energy, it's unlikely that this would be enough energy since the sun is so dim. One way evolution would handle this shortcoming is by absorbing every single wavelength of the visible light spectrum from the host star. On Earth, plants absorb every color of the wavelength except for green, which is reflected. But on this planet, plants can afford to reflect energy, thereby creating plants that have pure black leaves and stems. Let's say our goodbyes and explore the next two planets in our journey. Another possibility of life could be completely different and redefine what we think is possible. On this hellish exoplanet, temperatures reach a staggering 3000 degrees, hot enough to evaporate rock and send it high up into the atmosphere. During the planet's rotation, the temperatures lower just enough where the rocky atmosphere cools down to come raining back down into the oceans of magma that scatter the planet. In this environment, only a certain breed of life can exist, silicon. Like carbon, silicon has four valence electrons, but because it has an extra orbit, it's unstable when paired with the complex structures that carbon-based life uses. This means that silicon only has the potential to provide simple life forms. However, these life forms can survive the coldest of winters and the hottest of temperatures. On this planet, these microscopic life forms have been living in the deep magma oceans that cover this planet for millions of years, and it's unlikely that they will ever evolve into more advanced intelligent life. Let's leave these microbes and visit our final exoplanet. On this planet, conditions closely resemble Earth-like features. It lies within a habitable zone and is about the same gravity as Earth. However, the life on this planet will redefine what we think life is. 10,000 years ago on this planet, life was very similar to Earth. Organic life flourished in all areas of the globe, but then something happened. The life on this planet began experimenting with the electrical properties of silicon. Soon enough, the silicon devices began pushing the boundaries of what anyone thought was possible. Communication between anywhere on the globe was instant, and all the knowledge created by anyone was available for playback anywhere at any time. But this isn't where the story ends. The life on this planet began experimenting with silicon-based programs that stimulated self-thinking without the use of organic life. The pairing of silicon and its properties with the self-thinking of artificial intelligence created something that redefined life as we know it. However, as the crucial resources for humans like water and food were running short while overpopulation flourished, life was given two crucial options. Allow the effects of overpopulation and shortages take its toll and take detrimental losses in population, or evolve as a species and merge with the AI, thereby ridding themselves of their biological limitations. The latter was chosen, and this ended the era of biological beings, and spawned in the new era of hyper-advanced cyborgs. 
Their bodies were made out of optimized materials perfectly adapted to their environment. Where organic evolution takes hundreds of thousands of years and many generations, synthetic evolution, powered by artificial superintelligence, is exponentially faster and makes adapting to new environments trivial. It's likely that if a human civilization keeps innovating at the current rate, we'll face a similar dilemma as our cosmological neighbors did. Be constrained by our organic limitations, or merge with artificial intelligence at the expense of our organic roots.